What's up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 37. And we're going to continue up off with our bubble sort. We went over the intuition behind it and how the bubble sort algorithm works in the last video. So if you're not sure how it works, you can check that out. Uh, basically the gist of it is big numbers float to the end of the list. Uh, and that's what we demonstrated in the last video. And we also created a theory, or we went over the theory behind the swap function uh, with arrays and why you can't just copy over the values. Uh, so we're going to be implementing two functions in our program. Uh, and it's just going to be these two functions. And we're going to make it work with our unsorted array, which we're also using from our last video. Um, so we're going to start with our swap function because it's going to be, uh, like I said before, it's going to be the fundamental uh, process behind our bubble sort. It's just a bunch of swaps recurring over and over again, uh, depending on what we have. Uh, so our swap, we went over it before, so we're going to create a, uh, we're just going to create a function, let's just call it swap. Uh, it's going to take our array, so it's going to be our unsorted array. It's going to take an x value and a y value. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, we'll call this swap and we'll call this width. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, is because I don't want to confuse somebody with the XY convention of being a 2D uh, system. It's just supposed to be two arbitrary uh, values that contain the two positions that we're switching. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to make sure that neither of these values exist outside of our array so we don't like mess with our bounds. Um, or we don't uh, try to manipulate something that's outside of our bounds. So that's the first thing we check. If uh, if uh, if swap is less than unsorted dot length uh, or how about and and width is less than unsorted dot length. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our array, we're going to take the first value, store it into a temporary value, so let's just call this temp, and save it as our first value, because it's the number that we're swapping it with. We're going to replace the first value with the third value, or in this situation the width value, so we're going to set uh, sorted of uh, swap equal to sorted of width. Uh, unsorted, sorry. And then we're just going to set our unsorted of width equal to our temporary value. And that is the basic swap. Uh, it's what we went over in here. Uh, this would be our swap value. This would be our width value. We store our swap value into a temporary uh, integer. We set our swap position equal to the value of our uh, width position. And then we set our with position equal to our temporary value. So that's just a basic sort. Um, I actually would recommend keeping this on hand because you'll probably use some swaps fairly often and I'm probably going to be using using it in further code. So with our next function we're going to be setting, uh, we're just going to be doing our sort, it's our bubble sort. So it's going to take our unsorted array. It's and actually I think that's it because we can work everything else inside of it. So normally you would have if you were working in a different language, like if you were working in C, uh, you don't actually know or you may not actually know how big this array is that we're putting up. So you may need to include a length of the array, but we have that kind of available to us within the uh, uh, array a or within the Java API. So, we actually don't need it. 
So what we're going to be doing is, if you remember our uh, list here, we start off with our list of numbers and we're checking each index a certain number of times. Remember we had three passes which turned out to be n minus uh, one, where n was the number of elements in our array. So we know that we're at least going to be uh, looping n minus one times. So let's just create a uh, variable and we're going to be looping n minus one times. So that's uh, i is less than unsorted dot length minus one. The second loop is going to be moving through each position also up to n minus one because if we were to move to the final digit it would run outside of our bounds. We went over that in the last video as well. So we're going to say for j equals zero j is less than unsorted dot length minus one j plus plus. Oops. Int. And finally what we're going to do is we're going to perform any swaps that happen uh, within these two uh, lists. So any swaps that occur uh, in the list at any given time, which is going to be if a number, if our position at j, because this is going to be uh, this is going to be the array that we're moving through, and this is just the number of times that we're moving through the array, or yeah, this is just going to be the number of times we're moving through the array. Um, but since this is going to affect the position of the array, this is what we're going to be checking our swap with. And it's always going to be the position uh, and the position plus one that we're checking with. So we can do just a simple if statement. If our unsorted array of j is greater than our unsorted array of j plus one, we just want to swap our two values. So we're going to swap our unsorted array. We're going to put in our uh, first value, our swap value, which is going to be j, and our uh, swap with value equal to uh, j plus 1. And so this should, in theory, work out with our uh, function. So let's test it out. And if there's any problems, I can debug it for you guys. So there's obviously some problems with it. And I think the reason is because we didn't include it. It's always something dumb. Um, was that wrong? Oh, yeah, I spelled it wrong. Yeah, okay, so bubble sort, minus one, minus one. All right, so this should work out now. Uh, let's run that again. 1, 2, 5, 5, 9, 13, 15, 48, 65, 91. It all looks like it is in order. So you see that even with a uh, much longer list of uh, numbers, the bubble sort ended up working out um, and continued to apply the same intuition from the bubble sort as what we put into code. And you see that this is a pretty it, this is a pretty easy iterative solution. Um, since this goes from this just goes through how many passes we need to do and this just does the number of uh, elements in the array minus one. Uh, and if one is bigger than the other we just swap. It's a pretty easy algorithm. Um, which is why I wanted to show you, uh, you guys if you wanted to implement a really, really simple swap, uh, uh, like if you if you just wanted to implement a really simple s sorting algorithm, uh, this would be the one to go for. So uh, in the next video, we'll probably go be going through either, I think we'll just be going through one more sorting algorithm. I just want to give you guys some options because some of you may like the way another one works. Uh, for instance, me, I like recursive uh, algorithms. I think there's a certain type of beauty to recursion, uh, which is why I try to use it. That's why I used it in my Viganeer cipher and it's why I used it for the first um, sorting algorithm. 
So we'll see what we're going to do with the next one. I'm going to pick between a few of them, and I will see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you didn't, dislike it. I don't care. Um, but just make sure you tell me what I could do to improve. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead. If you don't, I also don't care. Uh, <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time.